everyone, welcome back to Earl Grey Books. I'm Ellie and I'm here today to do my April haul revisit. As you might be able to see, it's kind of a big one. In fact, it's kind of at this point in 2021 where the months just get bigger and bigger in terms of things that I was buying and that I still have not read. Uh, I have 18 books on this list and I think over the next few months I have ones that are like 20 something and then towards the end of the year we begin to taper off again but I'm hoping that I will be able to get through a few of these um, this month there's also uh, one or two that I'm considering um, unhauling but I'm going to share them with you all now I will link below my playlist of um, haul revisits that I've done so far this year if you're interested in checking that out and learning a little bit more about the whole plan. <laughs> um, I'm kind of trying still to work out what my, not so much what my goal is with this, but what my attack plan is. In terms of originally I was, if I didn't read or at least start all the books on my TBR, I couldn't buy books in the next month, but I'm trying to not buy books in April anyway. So that also just didn't work in the past. Uh, but also I really need to be reading these books. But for now let's jump in and I will show you which ones I have and then we'll work that out at a later date. Okay, so we're gonna start with some non-fiction because I have quite a few non-fictions this month. Um, starting up, I have My Inner Sky by Murray Andrew. I really like Murray Andrew as an artist and I also really enjoyed her first book, Am I There Yet? This is basically like her art along with like kind of like essay sort of things. Um, I am trying to find an example. Her art is pretty uh, like simple but cute and I, I like it. It makes me feel happy basically and uh, as you can see I did start reading this and I read 39 pages at some point, who knows when. <laughs> um, but yes, I feel like I could be in the mood for this one. It's talking about just like embracing life. And it's not, I don't know, I, it doesn't really feel like self help to me, but more of like this is her experience and this is what worked for her and so forth. Next up is The Shape of Sound by Fiona Murphy. This is a memoir by a, I believe she is deaf, yes. Um, this is sort of about her learning to, um, not so much accept that, that makes me feel weird, but like it's talking about her experience with sign language and hearing aids and sort of coming into working out what works for her rather than necessarily what people have told her works for her. So very excited about that one. And then keeping with the Australian theme, I have Sex Lives and Question Time by Kate Ellis. This is about women in Australian Parliament and why it sucks as much as it does. Uh, I bought this and then, as you can see I started reading it and I read 57 pages and at the time I was like wow this is so relevant to what's happening in the parliament right now in Canberra and now I'm coming back to this and I'm like wow look how relevant it still is to things that are happening in Canberra. So love that for us and um, yeah, this is really interesting. It does interview or she did speak to a number of 
politicians. There's a review from Julia Gillard on the front. And um, Kay Ellis was also a MP. So there's that one. And then I have two. I ordered these ones from Blackwell's literally in December of 2020 and they didn't arrive until April but I have classic readings on monster theory which is edited by Asa Simon Mitman and Marcus Henzel um I love looking at disability through like a monstrous lens because I feel like there's a lot there and that is a very common maybe less so now but if you think of things like Frankenstein um very much imbued <laughs> in that and yeah I got that I got this um kind of from that interest um it also talks about Beowulf and um, it talks about gothic horror and it talks about um, yeah all sorts of things like that. It is a very thin book but it's very strangely set out in that it's set out almost like a like a uni um, reading would be in that you read this and then you read this sort of thing rather than it all being you know like in a normal book um sorry if you could hear that truck uh i think that's the main reason that i have not really read this so far because i feel like i have to be in that like headspace and i currently am in that headspace because i'm at uni so i should i should read this i should read this this month it's short i'm sure i'll enjoy it and then finally, for the nonfiction, I have Killing the Black Body, which is uh, by Dorothy Roberts. And it is about, um, basically about reproductive rights for black women. As you can see, I also started this one. Uh, and I read 56 pages and I got straight into talking about uh, this chapter is talking about birth control. There's ones about um, teenagers. Uh, and then all sorts of other things. Um, abortion. Welfare. All things like that. So this, those 57 pages were definitely rough uh, to read about. But... This is something that I don't really know that much about. So I I just never really engaged with that topic before. But I, yeah, it's hard to say. I liked those pages in that I learned a lot, but it's not an easy read by any means. But let's talk about some reads that are easy and why I haven't read them because I don't know if you can tell. Ah, from the size of these. But these are all romance. Shock horror. Um, so let's start with these two. First up, I have Third Son's A Charm by Sheena Galen. This is the first book in this series. I have no idea what the series is called. But it is a series. I should read this. Uh, and then I have a, I think this is the only one. I have a paranormal romance. I have A Hunger Like No Other by Cresley Cole, which is the first book in the Immortals After Dark series. Um, I bought this before I was really reading any kind of paranormal romance. Um, in saying that, I haven't really read that much. It's basic, basically just Laura Thalassa and Nalini Singh, but I have heard, I've read Cresley Cole before, her YA series, and um, I've heard good things about this one, so I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> and then all of these, 
are Sabrina Jeffries, who is my favourite historical romance author. So I have How to Woo a Reluctant Lady, which um, I have started reading. And I'm 60 pages in. I have To Wed a Wild Lord, A Lady Never Surrenders, and Twas the Night After Christmas. I believe that is the correct order for the books from 3 through 4, 5, 6. <laughs> I had to count that. Um, yes, need to get back to that. And then I also have this one. This is What the Duke Desires which is the first book in the Duke's Men series, which is the series that follows on from this one. And I believe possibly that this is the last of Sabrina Jeffrey's series that connect, but don't quote me on that one. So yes, I have those. And then we're gonna move on to just the last ones that I have here um, that are all just a bit random really uh i have here i have two that i was sent by mel i have a few right thinking men by solari gentle gentile and the interrogation of a charla wolf by um amblin quaymala so mel and i did a book haul swap i've read one of those books i haven't read these two should really get on that. Um, I don't know that Mel has read the ones that I've sent her either, so I don't feel so bad, but I should, I should definitely get on these. And then, um, okay, we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Uh, I'm hoping to get to this one, um, possibly even before this video goes up. We're gonna see if I finish some of the other things that I'm currently reading and hopefully I will get to this and if not I will try and get to it in April. Uh, I have The Wolf of Orin Yarrow by K.S. Veloso. Um, I did start reading this one, kind of. I read 30 pages and this is one that I might end up unhauling because I'm not sure about it, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to try it again and start from the start and see how I like it. And then I have The Gaps by Leanne Hall. This is a Oz YA and very excited. I read most of this as an e-arc. I read like 70% and still haven't finished it. And that was like over a year ago now and it's kind of ridiculous so i need to get on this again i'm thinking i might read this in april or perhaps slip it onto my eurovisionathon tbr as my australia post my australia pick <laughs> um but you will see me talk about that in a few days and um, we'll see what I end up picking for it. And then finally, I've got to end this whole revisit with some Agatha. This is The Hollow by Agatha Christie. I don't, I feel like this one must have arrived after. I think a, a bunch arrived last month for my March one and um, this one I must have just been waiting for and it must have come in April. So can't read this one because I'm not up to this book and I've been reading the Poirot series in order, but I might try and read one or two of them in April as well as a way of getting them down because I kind of have a plan there. But that's it for April. Like I said, it's kind of one of the bigger ones. I'm hoping that I can get through a few of these and maybe even some of the ones from May. I think May is my biggest month for these haul revisits, so it would be nice to be able to either read some from there or read enough from this one that I don't feel so bad going into 
that one but we will see how that all pans out thank you so much for watching i hope you're all doing well and i'll see you next time bye